are on our way to Bowling Lake, the first day on our little adventure. And uh, Dave and I are looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. David Osborne and I'm here with Dan Lindholm. We're heading up to a place called Bolin Lake, which is in southern Oregon, just about on the border, not too far from the Oregon Caves. <clears throat> a lot of Bigfoot activity here. Um, the reason Dan and I are going here specifically today is because of an experience I had, I believe it was three summers ago. Uh, at the time, I was strictly a uh, flesh and blood type of Bigfoot person, but after my experiences and then talking to people, I realized that I might have been called what they called zapped. Now, I don't want people to think I'm into the woo. I'm strictly an experiential person, and what happened to me was real and dynamic. Uh, since then, I haven't had a chance to go up here. Uh, Dan and I were going to go in September. That didn't work out. But now we're back here in early November to uh, go to Bowling Lake. Uh, we're bringing bell meters, or what they call EMF meters, electromagnetic fields. Um, I've begun a new study where I think possibly that... Um, there could be a correlation between Bigfoot activity in the area and, and mel meters or EMF readings, electromagnetic fields. We're going up there not only to see if we can recreate what happened to me as far as my emotional experience where I got very, very depressed up there almost to the point I couldn't cook. Found a really nice footprint, wouldn't even take a picture because I didn't think in my head anybody believe me. And then these things mysteriously, these emotions disappeared as I got away from the area. So I might have gotten what they call zapped. I guess that's open to everybody's interpretation. But anyway, Dan and I are going up there today to uh, see if we can find any evidence, physical of course, would be, be great to find a good footprint. Uh, maybe hear some noises. I'm going to introduce myself like I did this recently in the Western Sierras, uh, that I'm there in peace and in harmony and friendship and don't mean any harm, and ask them for some signs to see if we get that, who knows. And also to find out if the feeling I had before which was not a good one while I was there. Most like I said, very extremely depressed, not suicidal, but just lacking of energy to see if that feeling will pop up again. Many people have experienced, said that they've had experiences like that when they've uh, gone places. So uh, I was in the Western Sierras not too long ago, a few weeks ago, and uh, I didn't feel like I got zapped, but definitely felt a presence around me and had some things happen. So we hope to have some exciting things happen here today. We'll see what happens. Okay, I'm up here with Dan, and we've got the mill meter out, the EMF meter, and we're at the minute I turn on, we're getting readings up here. Went up to point three, it's down to a point one. Once again, we should not be getting any a point two. We should not be getting any any type of. Uh, any reading up here because there's no electricity um, we're not on a, any kind of haunted house or anything we are getting a reading this is I think significant already um, my opinion tells me that maybe there's something out here I'm going to go ahead and talk to the forest and let them know we're here and see if we might get a sign hello hi we're here we come in peace we mean you no harm I know I was here a few years ago, and I feel like you didn't want me here. I hope you're okay with us being here today. And um, it would be great if you could give us a sign that you're here, a nice sign, not throwing a rock at us necessarily, but maybe hitting a tree or something, just something to let us know you're here. We'd appreciate it. Once again, we come in peace. My meter is reading point one, still point two. It seems to be bouncing around. It, once again, there's actually no no reason for this to happen and I'm moving away from our car so you can see it has nothing to do with the car electricity if there's even that but I'm getting a point too this should not be happening so is there a Bigfoot around I can't tell you that maybe there is is there a spirit around there's something that's putting out this energy um, here Dan in a minute I'm going to show it to you so you can see it on your camera there too that might help Point two. Point two, yeah. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating.
Once again, there's so much that's grown since I was here last time. I want to say that it was like right in here somewhere where I found the little baby footprints. Like kind of right, like almost like right up, like not very high up on a slope either. Maybe just a little bit. Although it seemed like a little more steeper slope. It might have been a little further up it. And Jet, and my pet, and my doggie, who is gone now, she was the real sniffer, big fish sniffer. But she, uh, um, she was just like, going crazy. I, she wanted to get up in there, and she couldn't because her legs or her back legs were starting to fail. I mean, she could walk, but she couldn't really. And I just had, I had my camera, my really nice camera, around my neck. I don't think I even had the cell phone to take pictures. Yeah, I had a real old style one still. And I had my camera right, hanging right there. And I thought, you know, I can't take a good picture of this. Nobody's going to believe me. And, you know, it was probably the most perfect, it was, the, it was the, perfect, the most perfect footprint I've ever found. And it was like just right there. And I couldn't take a picture of it. I said, man, it was all these rationally things going, well, nobody's going to believe you, the angle's bad, and I mean, I've taken a million pictures before that and since where I never even gave a shit about the lighting or anything, I just took the picture and took as many as I could and hoped they turned out, but it was weird, it was really strange, but yeah, I couldn't have casted it because I think it was just the angle of the slope, I wouldn't be able to get a cast of it, That's, but uh, the picture I could have taken, that I, I just didn't do it. Thing. Um, these readings are just very interesting and you know people say well you know if you, if you just see a black figure you're going to think it's Bigfoot and it might just be a spirit or something you know and that's not the whole idea you know um, we don't expect to see one you never see them when you're out researching Bigfoot you really don't um, what we expect to do is to have these things that have happened to us in the past such as rocks being thrown, you know, trees pushed over, um, actual physical things that show that we are not alone, not, and also the feeling of being watched, which is not a woo concept. This is something that happens to every single person if they're in a crowded area and somebody's staring at the back of their head, they're going to turn right around and look them right in the eye, and you know that's true. Now, this is just a, a natural instinct that we all have when we know that we're being watched. So this is not woo when I say that you can know when you're being watched and they're around. And this is a feeling that I've had many times in the past and I'm very interested to see if there's some kind of correlation between the EMF readings and this feeling of being watched. So it's not about seeing a Bigfoot and then saying, yeah, check out the readings on the, that we don't plan on seeing a Bigfoot. We, we hope to, but that's not, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to uncover some kind of markers, possibly, that Bigfoot may be in the area. You know, if you can, if we can actually get, get, find some kind of correlation between the readings and something happening, you know, that'd be great. But we also have the opportunity to possibly find out that they're not related, you know, that the EMF readings are completely separate from anything that happens Bigfoot-wise. You know, if we have rocks thrown or, or we have that feeling of being watched and nothing's going on with the, the mel meter, then, um, you know, we can actually come out and say, no, there is no connection that we can see, that we actually have readings that show there is no connection. So that's what we're doing out here. We're not trying to prove anything for real. I mean, for, you know, we're not, we're not trying to prove anything is real. What we're trying to do is find out what is real and what is going on with this Bigfoot and once and for all try to put it to rest you know is there any validity to the woo and the paranormal aspects that see, people seem to have with Bigfoot and uh, should be an interesting experiment okay hi we're uh, finishing off here at Bowling Lake and as you can see um, we have had readings the whole time we're here it's never gone down to zero this is interesting. Um, it really compares to when I was with Dan over there by his research area. Can I say the name or just leave it blank? Okay. And um, I didn't know how specific you wanted to get. And on the one side of the lake that we were at, because there's a lot of lakes in Oregon, so take your pick. On the one side of the lake we were at, we were getting readings the whole time we were there, but usually between the point two and point four, never went away that side of the lake. And then on the other side of the lake where we were, we weren't getting anything. Zip. 
unlike that, since we've been here, we've got SETI readings. It's on fire right now, but it's been hanging around on a 0.6 and a 0.7. It's never gone away. I even shut it off to see if, if it was a mal reading. But I, I've used this enough to know that um, I can go in my front yard and I'll get a zero. So when we're getting readings like that up here in the middle of nowhere, it usually means something. What it means, we don't know, but it means that there's something here, in my humble opinion. So that's nice to know that up here at Wolan Lake that uh, we are getting readings and just one more piece of evidence to put towards the Bigfoot slash paranormal puzzle that we deal with on a daily basis as we talk and communicate. So this is a significant finding and um, I know I'll be back up here again hopefully when the snow melts and hopefully Dan will be able to join me too and we'll be able to actually do some of the hikes we wanted to do up around here just around the bend here from where we are there's a hiking trail that goes around the lake and just a year or two ago uh, a husband and wife were chased out by a Bigfoot they saw and it was on a reputable site and um, based on my experiences and just Bigfoot people in general they agreed that Bowling Lake here is a pretty active area. So I'm here with David Osborne. He came up from uh, Southern Cal and he brought his EMF meters. We thought what better place than Soha to check them out and see if um, we can pin down some kind of uh, paranormal connection between Bigfoot and the paranormal. I'm seeing a little bit of stick structure or evidence, but as far as the EMF meters, I, I went right through where there was some documented activity, really strong activity, and got nothing. Nothing at all. See right up here? So these are the only kind of arches that I even take pictures of. It looks like the end is pinned down there. It doesn't look like it um, naturally occurred. And if you just look around here, this is right. See, camp is Soha. Camp is right there. That's right where people camp at Soha. Right on the other side of my bag, the little clearing. So we're just right off of the forest right here next to Soha. After feeling that feeling of being watched, Kirk, Kirk says, walk straight back, walk, walk straight back to camp. And I did, I walked straight back to camp. And he came back and he was shaking. And he said that through the goggles, he's seen a big old Sasquatch out there just stand up and walk off. And uh, he was pretty shaken and he could, he could notice a mark. I don't see the mark right now, but I think I see the tree. But out there, there was a mark on the tree, so he could get kind of a size comparison, and it looked like it was about nine feet tall. And just stood up and walked right away, fast. So, uh, despite, despite Matthew Johnson's claims that the Bigfoot had moved on and there was no Bigfoot here, we did see, one of us in our party did see one here back in July of 2016. Alright, I'm going to walk down here with the millimeter. Right now it's solid 0.03. I'm going to walk right down here where another incident happened. This is where all four, all, there was four of us out of the five. Two people had the goggles on, night vision goggles, and two people did not. And all four of us with our with naked eye and with the goggles that only show green, black, and white, saw an orange light flare up right out here. I thought it was right in this area. If anything, my millimeter went down a little bit. It's at 0 0.02. So once again, going through an area of a known anomaly and not getting EMF readings to correlate. 
So once again, I'm led to believe that if there is any connection between the paranormal and Bigfoot, or even if what we saw was, you know, something paranormal, then it's not residual. It doesn't stick around. It's not still here. The meter's not moved. It's stuck at 0.02 since we were over there by where I saw the light. Dave announcing us, letting them know we're here if they're around. I just want to mention that I, when we were up here, I had that feeling of being watched like never before. And I've never had it since as strong. Yesterday, walking down the road into here to make sure it was the right road, so we were in David's rental car. Yesterday we got, um, I hiked down in here and boy, I got that feeling of being watched real hard coming back, going back up the hill. And um, Dave's getting a millimeter reading right now, he said. I'm still stuck at 0 0.02. What'd you get, Dave? Stuck at 0.04, then 0.02 and stopped right after I did my talking. Huh. First time I've gotten any readings at all since I've been here. I'm not. Steve Osborne back again. I'm here with uh, Dan Lindholm, and uh, we were a little concerned that my old mel meter, my EMF meter, electromagnetic field meter, was maybe being too active and not giving accurate readings because it wasn't ever seeming to go down to zero since we got to Bowen Lake. Poor Bowen Lake, I feel pretty confident about it, but Bowen Lake it wouldn't go down, so we activated my second mel meter as kind of a uh, uh, comparison, a, a reality check, and. Um, Pretty much this whole time here at, at, at Soha, we've been getting zeros on this one. But I got a, this not maybe five, ten minutes ago, I started getting some little spikes on it, like a point zero one, point zero two. So it was somewhat uh, small. But just now, a few minutes ago, we got a point all the way up to a point two five on this, which is actually fairly significant because now that's telling us that the other meter may be maybe reading too much, but that we are getting some kind of energy here, a point two five. I said on the ghost shows they get all excited if they get a point one they feel there's something there so we got a point two five and it stayed for a relatively long amount of time for a, a, a thing probably two or three seconds and then dropped down to two and then one point five and disappeared so I would say based on these findings that there is some type of energy here in my opinion is it Bigfoot energy is it spirit energy from the Native Americans is it something that we have no conception about I don't know but I would say at this point in time I feel comfortable and confident saying that there is some type of uh, electromagnetic uh, energy here caused by something that we at this point we still don't know but there is validation at this point that uh, there is some kind of uh, paranormal activity in this area in my opinion thank you